Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity Open P1AM Arduino Modbus TCP client to click PLC. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there'll be links in the description below that will start your video one. There'll be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the first thing we'll do is uh, for our Arduino P1AM Modbus client to click server is to look at the click uh, uh, mod or Modbus server configuration. And we do that through our click programming software. So let's take a look at that. And here it is. And if we go to setup and then COM port setup, you will see that under port number one, we will use that's setup and we will ensure that this is set for a static IP or a, uh, a manual set for our IP address. In our case here, we're going to set it for 192, 168, 1, 130 with a subnet mask and our default gateway. Then we have our configuration for our client or master, which we're not using in this case. We're going to configure for our server or slave um, on our Modbus uh, network and we'll see that we have um, the TCP port number will be 502, which is default for Modbus TCP or Modbus Ethernet. Our maximum concurrent sessions is three, and we have a timeout of 60 seconds. So let's hit uh, OK for that, and OK for that. And what we'll do now um, is take a look at the Modbus addresses. So the click Modbus addresses that we will be looking for. So we, in this case here, we'll go to the address picker and we will uh, take a look at the DS. So we're going to take the Arduino Temperature Controller Pro and we're going to put it into this DS location. And if we display our Modbus, you can see that it's 40,001 and 40,002 we'll be using. So the 40,001 will be our Arduino temperature uh, amount. But in the uh, Arduino, what we use is hexadecimal addressing. So if we look at the hex addressing, it's actually zero hex and one hex for our DS1 and 2. So our temperature will be in the first one, DS1, and the temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius with an understood two degrees um, uh, decimal. So it will be, say, 20.50 degrees Celsius that we'll do slightly. Then we have a heartbeat. This heartbeat is just a register that will automatically keep incrementing a number by our Arduino um, P1AM. So it will always increment so that we can use that to determine whether or not we have good communications. So that is our two uh, registers that we're reading. And these are reading the registers. Next, what we want to do is we're going to take a look at the outputs. So they're the Y. And we're going to have eight different outputs, output one to output eight. And the hexadecimal number of the output is uh, 2000 hex to 2007 hex. So there are addresses that we're going to be using in our um, program in order to uh, program this um, Modbus client within our Arduino P1AM. So we'll hit cancel of that and we'll come back to this program. So let's go to our Arduino sketch or program. And this sketch is based on a, a, a sample that is off GitHub by Automation Direct and it's located right here. So that sets it up. Now we've changed it and modified it to incorporate both a thermocouple as well as some digital IO to read to read or to write um, to or click. So then we have our includes. We have an ethernet module here. We have the P1AM, which is the cards connected to our uh, Arduino. Then we have our Arduino RS45 and our Arduino Modbus. Now the Arduino Modbus depends on this RS45. That's why we have to have both of them even though we're talking Ethernet onto our Modbus network currently. 
Then we look at our MAC address. Our MAC address, before we assemble our unit, what you will find is it will actually be located right here. So it's a sticker on the side and you'll see the MAC address printed that we can take that MAC address and place it into our program. And so let's just uh, quickly, before we uh, finish off that um, program, take a look at the actual hardware that we have here. So here you see, here's my um, ether, my P1AM-ETH uh, Ethernet shield, which is doing my communication through the Modbus TCP. And then we have our P1AM100 CPU unit. Then we have um, some independent cards here. There's my simulator input card, my output card, and my thermocouple uh, input card, which is connected to my probe which is a j-type thermocouple our power supply is a rhino it's powering up the back plane here and powering up our expansion cards that we add to the right hand side of our arduino p1am so that is our uh, unit then we have up here we have a click it's the c0-11 drd -D. so our power supply is on the on the left hand side then we just have an analog card here but we will not be using that analog card. Now with this model, we have an ethernet port, which is doing our RS-45 communication. And that's the port that we just set up using the software. So what we're going to do is take the simulator inputs and we're going to, um, as they turn on, turn on the corresponding output of our Click PLC. And we're going to take our thermocouple input here and we're going to put it into an internal register here in the PLC. Then what we're gonna do is ensure that we have communications and when we don't, we will reset these bits here so that uh, our program can tell or determine whether or not we have good communications. So that is our hardware. So let's go back to our program here and you'll see here that next after we put the MAC address, we'll put our IP address of one, uh, 177. Then we put our an integer variable, HR40002, which we also found out that it was equivalent to the uh, hexadecimal number of one. Then we have our, you know, we've set up our ethernet clients for two, just to give you an idea of how to set up multiple uh, clients and multiple information. So even though we're only just use the first one here. Then we have our IP addresses. And remember the first one here is our click PLC, which is the 1130, and we just uh, put in 1131 just to show you how we can add uh, several other ones. Then we go into our setup mode. We set our timing out, our timeout, which is 50 uh, or 500 milliseconds, half a second. Then we have our serial begin, and we wait for our serial port uh, to open. Now, if we don't want to wait for the serial port to open, we can actually remove that, and our program will start right away. So in our case here, we want our serial port to open just as we're troubleshooting this and ensuring that we have the information flowing back and forth through our Modbus network. Then we have an ethernet uh, initialize. Then we have an ethernet begin with our MAC and IP address. Then we have, when we print out, we say our productivity open, our, Mod, our Arduino Modbus TCP client to click PLC. Then we click our um, P1AM Ethernet at the IP address. Then what we do is we check to make sure that our Ethernet is actually connected, um, our Ethernet shield. And if it's nothing, then we just wait until it gets connected because there's no sense doing anything on our network unless we have that communicating uh, fully. Then we check to make sure once it's connected, then make sure that we have our cable connected as well. Then what we do is we set our configuration. Now our configuration, if there's a couple links put into uh, this program in order to uh, show you how to do that. We've also put a post on using the Arduino P1AM um, industrial controller and how to, how to utilize uh, the specialty modules. Then we have a, the main loop. So the first thing we do is we get our thermocouple input. It reads the first analog um, temperature data from slot three for the channel. Then we uh, take a thermocouple, um, or 
thermal temp, and we convert that into an integer. So we take our temperature, which is a double, we times it by 100, so it gives me the two decimal places, and then we change that into an integer. So now I have a four digit uh, number that I'm going to be sending to our click PLC. Then what we do is we're going to use uh, the Boolean points to read the Boolean points in our program. So next what we do is we're going to ensure that we have a connection to our client and the first client zero. And if it's not connected, then what we do is we um, say that we failed connect. If it is connected, when we say connected. Then once we have connection, then what we do is we will um, actually take our holding register, write value, and write to zero, which is the first register, DS1 in the click, and write a thermal temperature, um, uh, temperature right into that register. And if it fails, then it'll do, it'll, it'll come up with our serial print and it tells us, look, it failed. So that's what the first one is here. Our second for loop is um, we're cycling through this for loop eight different times. And for each time that cycles through, it's going to print the next coil information. So uses the Boolean point. We're going to read uh, what's actually in the um, P1AM on our simulator card. Then once it's read, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the coil write and write to our memory location. And it's our, it starts at 2000. So because our I is from one to eight, we're going to just subtract one from that. So it's zero. So it starts at 2000, 2007, which lines up where our points are. And if it fails that, it will actually, if there's an error at all, it gives us a message on our um, serial port monitor. Then what we're going to do is take our holding register, the second one, address one, and we're going to increment HR 40002 with a number so that we'll see this number in flashing. So that is our entire Arduino program. What we'll do is we will upload this now to the controller. And once it's uploaded, just takes a, a couple of seconds here. It actually allows it to compile first and then it will upload. There we go. So everything's now uploaded to our controller and we will turn on our serial monitor. And what we should see is it connecting there we go. So it tells us what our cards are, where they are. Now it says that our Ethernet card is at that address, is, which is correct. Now it's attempting to connect to our server, uh, which is our slave on our Modbus, which is our Click PLC, which is telling us right here it's connected to it. And it's just telling us that our Modbus TCP client connected to our server or our slave. So everything looks like it's running fine. So now let's look back at our Click PLC program. There we go. And let's just monitor using data view our Modbus information. There we go. So you can see here we have uh, 22.25 degrees Celsius. And what we can do is just make sure we're testing that out okay. We can hold on to this probe. And when we do, that number then starts increasing as you can see here. So we're now at 26. So that seems to be working fine and we're getting that information in. The next one down, you'll see here is the DS2, which is what we call the heartbeat. And it's just constantly incrementing. So right now we're at 40 or, uh, you know, 6,000 6, right now and incrementing. So we're gonna look at the program, how to determine that heartbeat and how quickly our information's turning or coming back and forth. Then we have our outputs here. Outputs are all off right now. So what we can do is we should be able to take our toggle our inputs here and turn on the first one. And when we do, you'll also notice that the, um, the first click output turns on. So let's do the next one. 
and the second one. And we can go all the way down, turning on all of our um, inputs, which then relate and turn on all of our outputs there. So let's just turn off a couple of them here. I will leave the four on for now. So that is our communication. Everything looks like it's working just as we planned. Let's just close that down and let's just monitor a program. Now I have a program in here that will do a couple of things. The first thing it's going to do is tell me um, how much time it takes to uh, go through and write the two addresses, the temperature, write the, uh, the incrementing number, and also go through and loop and write the eight different outputs. So what we do is we set up a, a timer here and I have two registers. Here's the register that has the heartbeat, which tells me the, the incrementing number. And this is the previous heartbeat. And then what we do is if they're equal, then we set a timer and that timer defaults to um, 5,000 milliseconds, which is five seconds. So I've said this timer is actually timer one, which is a, um, a calm error. So when that T1 turns on, it means five seconds has passed and these two numbers are the same. And when these two numbers are not the same, then what we do is we take that communication timer, timer one, and we move it into DS3. And DS3 is telling me, me how many milliseconds it takes between those numbers that we're seeing incrementing um, on our our unit so which in this case here we're anywhere from 12 12 or 13 milliseconds is our update time or our throughput for our um, Modbus TCP network then what we do here is if they're not the same then we move our heartbeat into our previous one so that's our order of sequence so we actually um, set our time once they're different then we um, reset our timer and then we reset our heartbeat previous time. So that's how we determine, first of all, if we're running and if we're um, and how fast we are updating from our slave unit. Then what we do is if communications is lost, we said that we have this calm time one, it will actually time out when it does, it will set or reset, I should say, all of my outputs so back to zero again so i know the state of it if i lose communication so that is the program so if i activated that what i would do is say unplug this cord what i would see is my timeout will time out to five my output card will turn on and then you see that my all my outputs here are then off. So that makes sure that our slave, uh, we know the state of it at all times. If we go back to our, our COM port setting, you will see here that we're attempting to try to connect, but we're not connecting. Let's plug that card, card back, or the uh, ethernet cable back in. There we go. And as soon as we do, we establish the communications again. And again, it reflects the input back into the unit there. So you see that setting up the Modbus uh, client on our Arduino uh, P1AM is a very uh, simple and straightforward task. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.